Just to the north of central Tallinn, a short walk or tram ride away, sits the neighborhood of Kalamaya. A world apart from the adjacent old town and its steady stream of tourists, Kalamaya is home to striking wooden houses from the late 19th and early 20th century, old factory buildings, some of which are still functioning, and an ever-expanding community of talented young Tallinners moving in full of ideas and projects to pursue. That means it's also home to many of the most interesting new restaurants, cafes, and shops springing up in the Estonian capital. Preet Yerman and Yoko Alender bought an apartment here 10 years ago and later opened the F. Huna restaurant in a disused Soviet-era factory building. It quickly became a gathering place for the neighborhood, helping to build the community that has sparked Kalamaya's recent rebirth. They typify the sort of person Kalamaya attracts, not only in their entrepreneurial interests, but also in their desire to tackle questions of urbanism at ground level, working to improve the neighborhood they live in. Moving here about uh, 10 years ago, it wasn't uh, yet the place we, we saw it could be. I've really seen how, how people can influence their own uh, living environment, and that's what I found uh, really positive in uh, North Tallinn. It's a very, very interesting time at the moment. Let's, let's call it kind of new wave of urbanism. There is a niche which demands more quality, that kind of quality which was absent, as I said, 10 years ago. The Teleskivi Lumelinak, or Creative City, is one of the anchors of Kalamaya, a development in a former factory compound that's being slowly renovated as they go. It's a model for smart repurposing of old industrial land now populated by a growing list of shops, cafes, bars, design offices and galleries. A large theater space is due to open soon. It's not like a short-term investment project for us where we develop it a few years and then sell it further with a, with a profit. So this is something we need to want to give to our children. It has gotten a lot more safer here. Uh, it has um, helped different communities to interact with each other and uh, has brought services closer to the people who live in Kalamaya. And the culture is a lot more available uh, now here. To see uh, several years later that what kind of impact this has had on Kalamaya is quite, uh, quite surprising. A quick stroll around a small radius of Kalamaya today reveals dozens of retail and food ventures, workshops and art galleries all of them interesting. There's Pudel, a small bar stocking beers from around the world. Karl Anus' workshop where he crafts wood-framed eyeglasses. Sesun, a large restaurant tucked behind a building serving an excellent Baltic lunch. And Kalamaya Pagarikoda, an easy-to-miss bakery with the best Moscow buns in the city. Maya Toter champions an old-fashioned way of building, stocking eco-friendly natural building materials and salvaged house components. Its staff are on hand to advise on how best to lovingly restore a building and are particularly expert when it comes to the wooden houses of Kalamaya. One of the newest shops in the area is Yuke's, a bicycle shop founded this year by a handful of enthusiasts tired of having to source bike components from abroad piece by piece. In addition to selling the full range of bicycle kit, its owners also organize citywide bike rides and campaign for improved cycle infrastructure in the city. Soviet rule in Estonia lasted from the 1940s until the early 1990s, and that legacy is most evident along the waterfront, situated minutes from the streets of Kalamaya, but almost entirely blocked off by the likes of a sprawling old prison and a former submarine factory and shipyard. Many of these buildings are earmarked for or in varying stages of development, with tens of thousands of new residential units planned and many commercial spaces alongside. Much of that development is good news for Kalamaya, but residents have had to work to ensure that as developments push ahead, public space along the seafront isn't closed off. Kalamaya has many assets, but its engaged community is perhaps its most appealing and most important to its future. It's known very well by this active citizens, especially concerning also spatial development, because a lot of planners, architects, urbanists live here. The activities are very much focused on having our own say and, and uh, making our own visions how street space should be developed, for example. Residents here are working towards improved conditions for pedestrians, more cycle lanes and better public transport. They're keeping an eye on what goes up in the neighborhood to make sure it doesn't lose its charm, that it stays family friendly and safe. And though much of this work is long term and little help comes from the city government, this is a decidedly optimistic group of people who see Kalamaya and the rest of Estonia as full of opportunities for growth and improvement. Opportunities they intend to seize upon. 
I think I can use my expertise in the built environment to, to have an impact. And, uh, and maybe as Estonia is actually very much a countryside nation or even a forest nation still, the urban culture is really young, so I think this field is also something that needs a lot of uh, development still and also a lot of sort of uh, work with people to actually make them realize what they can do in the city and what kind of a lifestyle they can lead. And they, It doesn't need to be a place where you want to escape from to go to your country house, but it can actually be nice all week. For Monocle in Tallinn, I'm Gabriel Lee.